All right, let's let's continue on with our lecture 16 about street fighting integrals, right? In the previous video, we saw how algebraic techniques can be useful in helping us uh, rewrite integrands in ways that are more preferable for integration. I mean, heck, that's what partial fraction decomposition is all about. Um, so I want to mention that a good rule of thumb is to try using u substitution before trying integration by parts. Integration by parts is a harder technique. Um, if u substitution will work, use it first. Um, in particular, I like to use integration by parts as a last resort, typically. The only exceptions is if I can see that integration by parts is an obvious is an obvious uh, technique to use here. Um, efforts should first be employed to utilize any obvious substitution or manipulate the integrand to a form that's more appropriate for that u substitution using some type of algebraic or trigonometric identities. Certain function forms should be recognized, right? Uh, so for example, if the integrand is trigonometric, then a combination of trigonometric identities and u substitutions probably will be quite fruitful like we saw in section 7.2 of Stewart's textbook. Um, if the function is rational and no convenient substitution is available, um, maybe decompose the rational function to partial fractions and then integrate it, like we saw in section 7.4 of Stewart's textbook. Um, if the integrand involves radicals, um, perhaps a rationalizing sub, uh, sorry, perhaps a trigonometric substitution would work, or also this idea of a rationalizing substitution might be helpful here. This is what I want to show you in this example. Let's try to integrate the square root of x plus 4 over x. This is a rational function that doesn't involve a square root here. And so our first inclination might be to do some type of trigonometric substitution. But if we're doing that, we'd have to take the square root of x to equal a 2 tangent of x, a 2 tangent of theta. And that's going to be really, really messy. That's not what we want to do. So instead, we're going to try what I call a rationalizing substitution or a ratio sub for short. And I'll explain the name in just a moment. So what you're going to do for your rationalizing substitution, you're going to take the square root and set it equal to u. Take the square root of x plus 4 as u. In which case, then take the derivative by the usual chain rule. You will get dx over 2 times the square root of x plus 4. And so the reason why this is useful is that square roots and in fact, all radical functions, there's sort of a self-similarity between the original function and the square root. Uh, that, that is its derivative, excuse me. You'll notice that both the square root, uh, the, 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 the original function has a square root, but then the derivative has that exact same square root inside of that. And we can make a substitution, this is u. Uh, and therefore, this expression looks like du equals dx over 2u. And with this perspective, if we clear the denominators, we see that 2u du equals dx. And so we can take make a substitution here. This is u. We can make the substitution that dx is equal to 2u du. And so with these substitutions in mind, uh, you would end up with, again, the square root of x plus 4 is a u on top. The dx is a 2u du. What do you do with the x on the bottom? Well, these things right here are equations. You can manipulate them as equations. Square both sides, you get that u squared equals x plus 4. Um, subtract 4, you get x equals u squared minus 4. And that's what you're going to put in right here, u squared minus 4. Uh, and so therefore, this thing looks like 2u squared over u squared minus 4 du. I'm going to take, I'm going to factor the 2 outside because it's just a constant multiple. I'm going to squeeze it in right here. So you get this 2 integral of u squared over u squared minus 4. And this is where the name rationalizing substitution gets its name. We've done a substitution. And actually, I think there's two, there's two reasons one goes here. We did a substitution involving a square root, right? The square root is this irrational expression. You'll notice that after the substitution, the square root's gone. So in some respect, we've like rationalized the fraction. So that's one way of thinking about it. Um, though, although I think the term actually derives from the idea that if you do this rationalizing substitution, you turn the function typically for which we can then use uh, partial fraction decomposition to help us here. I mean, we have u squared over u squared minus 4. Um, because this is because we have a u squared on top and bottom, I'm going to do not long division, but short division to help me out here. Uh, because we're going to take u squared minus 4 over u squared minus 4. And then since I subtracted 4, I have to add 4 to go from there, 
you and like that. And so the first one, the first fraction, we'll just simplify just to be a one. The other one, we're going to have to do a little bit more with it. And so we end up with the integral. Oh, I switched to red there. We're going to end up with the integral of 2 du. And then with the second one, we're going to have an 8, the integral of du over u squared minus 4. Uh, and there's 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 two one you could do a partial fraction decomposition, uh, which is the the approach I'm going to take right here, because uh, after all, if you take eight over u squared minus four, you could break that up as a over u minus two plus b over u minus two. Clearing the denominators, you get eight equals a u minus two. Uh, let's see, actually, I, did. I wrote u minus 2 twice, didn't I? Uh, we'll make the first one be negative, the second one be positive. So we get a times u, u plus 2, and then we get b times u minus 2. Uh, and then annihilate things, right? So when u equals negative 2, uh, you're going to annihilate the a, and you end up with a equals negative 4b, therefore b equals negative 2. Uh, when you plug in u equals 2, that'll annihilate the b. And so you get 8 equals 4a, that is a equals 2. So with that approach, you can end pretty quickly. Antiderivative of 2, of course, is going to be a 2u. Uh, and this next one, we're going to get uh, the integral of 2 over u minus 2, du. And then minus the integral of 2 over u plus 2 du and then so by the usual usual trick we do here you're going to get two the natural log of u minus two minus two times the natural log of u plus two plus a constant you can actually combine those those natural logs together they're both a com common divide a common coefficient of two so you get two u plus two natural log of the absolute value of u minus two over u plus two plus a constant, uh, something like that. And then remove the u, so the u by remembering it was just the square root of four, square root of x plus four, excuse me. So you get two times the square root of x plus four right here. And then you're gonna get two times the natural log of the absolute value of the square root of x plus four minus two over the square root of x plus four plus two, uh, plus a constant. And so we can find the antiderivative using um, partial fraction decomposition. It works out pretty nicely in this situation. If you wanted to though, back here, uh, you could have also tried to do some type of like uh, secant substitution. You could take u to equal two secant theta. That would be okay. You could do that as well if you prefer uh, over the partial fraction decomposition. Because again, with when it comes to street fighting, there might be more than one option. Do what works best for you, right? If you can do it, then you can do it, and that is what you're gonna you're gonna use. If you can do it, you can use it. We'll say it that way.